Welcome back to The Real Country File. We're in the final week of harvest now. We're now cutting beans. I don't know if you can see, but they're a lot smaller than they normally would be. In fact, we weighed one. One only weighed 22 grams and a big bean weighed 72. So that is why this year we're only getting about a ton and a half, if that, to the acre of beans. The drought has really affected a lot of spring crops. Although I was talking to someone yesterday, spring barley did really well. So how have your crops fared this year? We could really do with the price going back up on most commodities because fertilizer is now hit an all time high again because of the, the closure of the other fertilizer AN factory in the UK, which is not ideal and not good at all for food security. Anyway, this week, Stephen is visiting a dairy farm in Lancashire. So let's see how he got on there. Well, this week on The Real Country File, I've come along to uh, find out what might quite possibly be the shortest food mile story that we've ever covered. Another bit of farm diversification and with this hot weather, another bit of ice cream as well. It's uh, Jersey Girls. And we're going in a different direction on this farm because of its location. It's located in Art of Birds Country Park. The best part of half a million people walk past farm gates. Is it really? Number one caravan park in country, just past farm. East Lanks Railway outside of us. Yeah, the steam railway. Steam railway. So we thought logical thing here. We've got the Jersey cows, premium quality milk. We're going to ice cream. So, so have, you, have you always had jerseys then? We've had jerseys about 20, 21 years now, 21, 22 years. Okay, and what, uh, what made you start with jerseys? Uh, we didn't have a great lot of land and jerseys didn't need a great lot of land, you know, per cow. So let's go and have a look that at was the logical cows, thing to go. So they're in a different, different kind of pool. I don't see many of these around anymore. Oh, no, don't. you've not lived unless you've milked in one of these. This is what it's all about. The, girl, yeah. the girls seem happy enough. Yeah, they're happy enough in this. You can't, yeah. But hopefully in the next 12, 18 months, these will move over to one of our other farms. Hopefully they'll go into a rotary bar with them. It won't just take as long as it milk takes now for milking. It takes three and a half hours now milking now. And how many cows have you got? Uh, 100, 105. And how much of the milk that you're, milk, you, you, you're milking at the minute goes into the, the uh, ice cream jar? Roughly 100 litres a day. Right. Roughly 100 litres a day to ice cream. So you getting a decent premium for what you're not turning into ice cream? Yeah, we can't complain. Our milk goes to Longley Farm. Uh, Jane E. Dickinson's making to yogurts, cheese, cottage cheese. Uh, and we can't, you know, no, you can't complain with Jane E. Dickinson, Longley Farm. Absolutely fantastic dairy. Right. Wouldn't, 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 no, absolutely fantastic. And in terms of, you know, if the ice cream gets much bigger. Yes. You've got the capacity to. We, the main, the main, main herd will be moving over to one of our other farms in the next 12, 18 months. And we'll be keeping 20, 25 cows here that'll be milked here just for ice cream, milkshakes, coffee, uh, cheese, stuff like that. Keep the food miles down still. Keep the food miles down, what produced on farm will be sold on farm. And I'm guessing that the families that turn up, they actually want to see the cows, that's a big part of the Yeah, attention. when they turn up, as time goes on now when we alter things about again, people will be able to watch the cows being milked. Natalie will explain to people what the process is. So as it develops now, they'll actually see the cows being milked, they'll see the milk go to the dairy, see it be pasteurised, then they'll see it go into ice cream, go into milkshakes, go into bockles. Only bockles to be sold here, not, not for delivery or go to shops, just what people want to come to the farm and buy. Brilliant. Well, Darrell, I look forward to coming in oh, over future years and seeing development. You're yeah, more than welcome, more than welcome. Thank you. Yeah. You're milking down uh, on the farm today, making the ice cream. How long yeah. have you been milking cows? Oh, I've been milking cows all my life. We were born and raised into it. Personally, I've been down here officially for a year, but I have been coming down here helping out milking cows for the last two or three years. That's what I do, I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, so you're from farming stock? Yes, we are. Yes, born and bred. Wouldn't, wouldn't do anything else. That's so all I've own, only known. Dairy or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah dairy farm. Uh, dairy farm and beef and sheep. In the yeah, local we've been, area? Yeah, in the local area. Only in Ramsbottom up the road. So yeah. what are these girls like to milk their jerseys? They're characters, definitely. They love the, love the back legs, definitely. But I'd say they're easier than Holsteins, a lot easier. 
and they're so much nicer. I prefer Jersey over Holstein. They're easier to handle, they're a lot smaller and they're just like pet dogs really. <laughs> Notice you've got uh, very young farmers on. Oh yeah, part where, of where do you meet? When do you meet? We meet every Monday night at quarter to eight. We do different things every single week from going on farm tours to going and playing bowling to playing tug where, of war. Whereabouts do you meet? We meet at the Hunt Kennels in Holcomb. Oh, yes, Hunt Kennels in Holcomb. And I've got to ask you, what's, do you like a bit of ice cream? And if so, what's your oh, favourite? Oh, I love it. My favourite flavour has to, has to be just Jersey, but then they've also brought a new flavour out called strawberry popcorn. That's definitely up there. I'll go and give it a go. I'm going to let you get on my milk, you know. Thank that? you very much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Well, we've come into the heart of the operation and uh, Tony's here with uh, with the ice cream making uh, paraphernalia all around you. Tony, how long have you been making ice cream? Oh, about 14 months now. Tell us a little bit about the process, about when you get the milk, when it comes in here. What's, uh, okay. what, what's the kind of steps that, that you follow? Right, well, we draw the milk from the tanks in the, other, in the milking shed, uh, bring it through. It has to be all cleaned down make sure it's hygienically clean uh, and then we have a, a dry mix which you can see the ingredients on the shelf behind me um, they all weighed out into pans so that we've got specific weights to make the mix we then mix that with jersey milk and with jersey cream to get the wet mix once we've got that wet mix it goes into the top part of the machine just here and that does all the pasteurizing for us and gets it up to a temperature of between 85 and 90 degrees to make sure that the milk is pasteurized fully. Once we've done that, we then drop that through from there, with this device, down into the bottom part of the machine, which is the actual ice cream maker. Um, we do a number of flavors. Uh, so some of them are just a plain flavor where we have the jersey, just a case of using the base. Uh, some of the other ingredients we mix with a variety of things which you can see on the shelf at the back there uh, to make flavours such as strawberry. Uh, we do mango sorbets where there's no milk involved. Um, we do mint, chocolate, uh, raspberry pavlova, to name a few. And, uh, and how's it going? You know, how, how's, how's the ice cream business this summer? I'm hoping it's good after heat wave we've had. It's, it's doing very well at the moment. Uh, the heat wave has helped. Uh, we've had crowds every day, so it's all good. Uh, my problem is trying to keep up with the demand. Um, for every pan I make, we seem to sell a pan. So we, we never get ahead at the moment, but we've got plans afoot to make uh, more in terms of volume so that we can then make sure we've got adequate stocks to meet any demand. We've seen the cows earlier uh, getting milked. Yeah. Just how important is it to people that turn up that there's like zero food miles? I think it's very important because a lot of people question it. If I walk out anywhere, uh, I'll get stopped and I'll ask how many Jersey cows we have. Uh, how does the milk get delivered from the parlour into the ice creamery? Uh, so I think it's very important that people know exactly where it's going from. Excellent. Well, thanks, mate. I was probably time for an ice cream. I hope you have. I hope you enjoy it. Well, Natalie, we can, uh, we can hear the cows being milked literally three meters uh, beyond that fence here we are at the ice cream uh, kiosk tell, tell me a little bit about about jersey girls and and just just how it's going and general the business yeah um so we've been open for just over a year now um and obviously we've got jersey cows here we've got about 200 jersey cows and then we use the milk from the milking parlor just walk it a few meters to our kitchen and that's where we make our ice cream um, we've got over 50 different flavours that we make and our most popular is our Just Jersey, which is purely our milk ice cream. And in terms of um, this year, are we, uh, are, we, are we happy with sales? Is yeah, it? it's gone really well. We, we can't keep up with the ice cream production at the moment. It's been really popular. Um, a local community have been really, really supportive of us as well, which has been great. Well, Angela, it's not just you that can have the ice cream.
Thanks for that, Stephen. I've also been up in Lancashire this weekend doing a little bit of tractor pulling demonstrations with some farm tracks at a great Eccleston show. So I saw a lot of people there. Really good event. You should all try and make it next year. Anyway, now Angela was at Nantwich show the other week and she was looking at pylon safety with the electricity guys. So here's a little bit more about that. I'm here now with Kevin from SP Energy Networks. And uh, Kevin, I know you've got a, a really important message that you're talking to about um, safety with farmers here at the Nantwich show. So, so just tell us briefly, overview, what, what is it that you're trying to get across? So we're, we're trying to raise awareness amongst the agricultural community about the, 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 the dangers and the hazards around uh, overhead power lines. Um, one of the, the issues that we have is that it's a misconception that people have where, where the, uh, they see wires mounted on telegraph poles. So these wires, for example, So, here. so the, these wires, for example, here, I mean, these uh, would, would typically be carrying 11,000 volts, but we, we're, we're, on wood poles we can have anything up to 33,000 or even 132,000 volt power lines. Gosh, so not something that you want to be touching with a, a tip-top trailer? Or no, a... and, and unfortunately in, in this day and age the, 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 the size of machinery is increasing. Uh, the, 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 the speed of, 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 uh, of, of the work being carried out is increasing as well. So all in all, uh, a lot more hazards uh, than, than we're used to from many years ago. So really, if you've got any sort of poles or wires on your farm, then just be always conscious of that when you're moving around the fields. But Absolutely. presumably, tell contractors and anybody else that might be in your fields as well. Yeah, yeah. and, and also to, to be aware of the... The, the, the physical height of the machine or, or the potential heights because a lot of these machines are able to, to fold up and, uh, and, and reduce size to, to maneuver around um, but also to be aware of the, the actual height of the lines uh, and if you are uh, at, at all unsure you can contact SPNG Networks uh, and we will actually come out and do a, a survey of any uh, power lines that we do have on your property. I see, so if you know your vehicle is a certain number of metres they could ring you and check, will that go under Absolutely. this particular wire? Absolutely. Right, okay, great. And I know you've also got uh, some kind of sticker to go in the cab. What's yeah, that about? Yeah, so, so we can provide uh, uh, stickers that will, will go inside the cab that you can, uh, you can post the, the height of the, the, the vehicle um, or the height of any lines, uh, especially if you've got a site plan for your, for your property. Um, the other thing is that there's also uh, other information available, so you can access um, a document called GS6, uh, which is available from the HSE. You can download it from, download it from the, the HSE's website. And there is also various uh, literature and pamphlets that are available from uh, SP Energy Networks if you get in touch with us. Okay, so simple things to do that could potentially save your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. Keep safe in your fields. That's about all for this week. Thanks for everyone that's watching. Don't forget, if you've got some stories that you want us to cover, send us an email. Or if you know people that are capable of doing some filming like this only on the phone and can send us in what's going on on their farm, get in contact with us and we can get them on the show. So, like I say, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you all next week. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the like button as well. It'll be handy. Thank you.